Hello everyone. In the previous uh, video, we had started our discussion on buckling and we had arrived at this uh, rather complicated looking set of governing equations and boundary conditions. And at the end of the video, I had uh, mentioned uh, how it may be possible to uh, reduce uh, this, uh, this equation somewhat. So let's do that. So uh, first of all, the first key thing to note here is that uh, uh, suppose we consider uh, a, a rod like this. Okay, so a rod or a beam or a column uh, like this, and uh, let's say that this end is free and this end is clamped. So this is uh, an, uh, just an illustrative case, and we have uh, this kind of load. Okay, so this is very much uh, a specific example of the general situation that we had been dealing with here. Uh, you can have transverse direction or lateral loads also present here, but I'm just considering a very simple case. Now, uh, you may note that I have not uh, written any uh, force uh, in this direction, but if you draw the, if you cut this out and, and draw the free body diagram of this, you will have the emergence of this reaction force. So it is very much like a special case of the general situation we were considering in the previous video. Now, in this situation, you see that if we have to consider buckling, then we have to note that uh, the US variable at this end, at x equal to L, uh, if, the, if the total length of this beam or rod is capital L, then the US variable, that is not specified here. Okay, and the same situation can be so if you have uh, a, a hinged end here so instead of this kind of a free end completely suppose you have something like this that uh, uh, this end is hinged in this fashion okay so it is hinged like this uh, and uh, these are uh, these are placed uh, between rollers or on rollers okay so this this is this this end is hinged at this point and this kind of a setup it allows it uh, to, to to move in this horizontal direction uh, we can also have another situation where uh, perhaps the rod is uh, is is clamped here so to speak it is clamped here but this end where it is clamped, uh, that itself, so maybe it is some kind of a platform, and that platform itself is free to uh, maybe roll like this. This is not the greatest of diagrams, engineering diagrams, but uh, you, you know, I hope you get my spirit. <clears throat> now, uh, what I'm trying to get here is that the most important thing to note, and of course, you'll have the load P also here. <clears throat> So uh, what I'm trying to get uh, at here is that the US variable that has to be such that it is not specified. Okay, so coming to this thing, coming to this uh, US is specified thing. So we have at x equal to 0 and x equal to L, either this or this. So what we are going to say is that as a first step towards the simplification of a set of governing equations and boundary conditions, we are going to say that at x equal to L, US is actually not specified. Okay, US is not specified. And if US is not specified, therefore it must immediately follow that from this either or statement, if one of them is not true, then the other must be true. Okay, so at x equal to L, it must be true that EA times this curly bracket with whatever present inside it must be equal to minus P. Okay, so this is at x equal to L. Please note that. Now, things get very interesting here. You just take a look at this governing differential equation. Okay. Note that we have D dx EA curly bracket. Okay, so this D dx is over the entire thing. That is equal to zero and this equation mind you is not true at, at x equal to zero or at x equal to l rather over the entire domain so this is true over this entire domain which means that 
because this is d dx equal to 0 this must means that e a times the curly bracket of that that is equal to constant and this thing is true for all values of x lying between 0 and l included okay now you see the interesting situation on the one hand we have at x equal to l e a curly bracket is equal to minus b but on the other hand we are saying or we are obtaining from the governing equation that e a curly bracket is equal to constant over the whole domain now if it is a constant over the whole domain and at any one point within on that domain which is at x equal to l we are saying we are finding that e a has a particular value which is minus p then it must be true then it must must be true then that all over the domain elsewhere also it has to be that same exact constant value okay so you think about it for a second it will strike you okay so the the conclusion from this and this is that e a so e a curly bracket must be equal to minus p all throughout the domain okay let me write that better must follow that e a curly bracket must be equal to minus p for all values of x lying between 0 and l okay okay so if that is true e a curly bracket is equal to minus p all throughout uh, x then you see in the second governing equation we also have this presence of this e a curly bracket so everything is kind of coming together so this equation also is true for all values of x lying between 0 and l and if that is so we already have found that e a curly bracket is equal to minus p so all that you have to do here is come back here and substitute e a curly bracket is equal to minus p okay so let me uh, let me copy this equation and go to the next slide So the second governing equation that is going to give me minus d dx e a curly bracket that is replaced by minus p dw dx all right and if in p is, is a constant so what we can do is uh, we can rewrite this entire thing as e i all right so you see uh, as uh, in the process of finding our governing differential equation uh, for for the uh, for the buckling we have arrived at a fourth order equation where just like our normal bending case we have the presence of this term this eid for wdx4 uh, if you compare with the previous theory but in addition we have this extra term this p d square w d x square which was not present earlier okay so without this term this is exactly like what we had obtained earlier in our previous videos um, but this is the extra thing that is occurring okay so uh, now uh, one may argue that okay we have done all of this thing but it seems like a linear equation doesn't it i mean it is a linear differential equation like a so it's a it's a fourth order differential equation but it is a linear equation okay but it does include within it uh, the nonlinear ingredient okay which is why it will be able to capture buckling now uh, let us not just stop here uh, we, sh we should be very happy that we have managed to uh, simplify our governing equations because please note that uh, captured within this one equation is the information from the first of the governing differential equation okay you see what is what has happened is that uh, in the process of finding that one governing equation we have utilized the information from this because we have used this we have already integrated this out to obtain this and that we have utilized uh, and to obtain this information which this information in turn we have replaced substituted here so whatever we have obtained at the end 
that one governing differential equation it encapsulates within it the information from the other governing equation also so so this uh, uh, this pair of governing equations which we had obtained in the previous video that is perfectly equivalent to the one equation which we have just now obtained which is this equation okay so this is uh, this is rather important uh, very very important we mark it out but what about the boundary condition so so let's take a quick look there so in the boundary conditions we have again already utilized this one okay so we don't we don't have to consider it we have already utilized this information the governing equation that we have is purely in terms of the w so wherever uh, uh, we have the w present so basically these two sets uh, we are going to utilize that let me just copy it out but here also a little simplification will be possible so boundary conditions at x equal to 0 and x equal to L we have the following but you please note that this E a curly bracket is nothing but minus P so what we can do is we can just replace this thing by this minus P all right so that's all there is to it uh, so, uh, so we'll see uh, how we can use these uh, these general boundary conditions to uh, to uh, to certain specific uh, cases. Okay. So the problems that can be uh, possible from uh, from this part uh, of of the theory uh, will be based on uh, various kinds of applications. Uh, of these boundary conditions and the, and the solution of this governing differential uh, equation all right so on that note uh, i'll end this uh, video and in the next one uh, i'll uh, i'll discuss uh, the uh, one example all right uh, thank you very much